Okay, so this section is going to talk about tissues and the integumentary system, which includes um, the skin and all of those accessory organs. Here's a list of the learning objectives for the tissues portion. And the first part, we're going to do an introduction to tissues and then go through all of the different types of epithelial tissues. So on your study guide, you'll notice that it's set up a little bit differently. So it starts out with some general definitions and then it transitions into this thing that I call the tissues table. Now for the tissues table, it has you list the major cell type, the major features, um, the location and the function of the tissues. And by doing that, you're actually working toward completing the course competency uh, in reference to the tissues. Now if you look at that table, some of the stars or asterisks that are in the table, those signify that it's a very important part and that that's going to be on a quiz or exam. Anything that doesn't have an asterisk in the box, that's something that you still have to fill out to complete the study guide, but it's not necessarily going to be asked on an exam. So starting out with the first few definitions here, the four major types of tissues. On an exam, I will ask you a multiple choice question that says, which of the following is not one of the major categories of tissues? So these four are the ones that are. So knowing these will help you answer that question. So the four major types of tissues are epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscular tissue, and nervous tissue. I'm going to give some generalized characteristics of each one of these tissues. So with epithelial tissue, it consists of layers of compacted cells. The tissue is made up of cells. So it's cells that are connected together that form that tissue. With connective tissue, it's cells that spray out an extracellular matrix. And a majority of the tissue is not the cell, it's the matrix that was sprayed out by those cells. And that matrix can be made up of different types of protein, lipid, carbohydrate components. The next tissue, muscular tissue, has contractile properties. So it has the ability to decrease its size and contract. And nervous tissue has the ability to transmit information in the form of a nerve impulse. So when focusing on the epithelial tissue types, you'll notice that our epithelial tissues are usually given three names. The first name is either simple or stratified. Now simple or stratified describes the layer type. Simple is one layer. Stratified is talking about multiple layers. Then you'll see the second word is one of these three. Squamous, cuboidal, or columnar. Squamous is talking about flat or egg-shaped. If you've ever cracked an egg open in a frying pan, that central yolk part and then the white part going around it, that's kind of what a squamous cell looks like. So the nucleus kind of bulges out a little bit, but then you see the cell membrane surrounding that. Cuboidal are cube-shaped cells, and columnar are column-shaped or rectangular elongated cells. And then the third word that you give to the tissue would be epithelium. And sometimes they'll say epithelial tissue, like simple squamous epithelium or simple squamous epithelial tissue. Depends on what book you're reading at the time. So for each one of these tissues, I'm going to help you fill out that tissues table. So it would be really beneficial if you had that next to you and you're actually writing in while you're listening to these lecture slides. For all of the tissue types that say epithelium, the major cell type is an epithelial cell. So down the row, I think the first seven or eight tissues that say epithelium in them, you can fill out epithelial cell for each one of those. Now I'm going to describe some features of this tissue. If you recall what simple means, simple means one layer. 
Squamous means flat or egg-shaped cells. So for features, that's literally what you're going to write. One layer of flat or egg-shaped cells. When you look at this, it looks like a mess of stuff. But you want to try to find common cell types. Cell types that look similar to one another. And when you look here, you've got a cell here and then you have another cell here and it kind of goes around from there. And if you notice this cell type is a squamous shaped cell and it repeats going all the way around in a circle. And we only have one layer of these. Now over here it appears like there's multiple layers over to the left here but actually, this is enclosed by another basement membrane to create another one of these structures. So we're focusing on each one of these individual cells. They're going around in a circle like this, and they are not packed on top of each other. So there's not layer upon layer upon layer. It's just one single layer. This dark purple thing is the nucleus. Why are some cells missing a nucleus? Well, this is an actual tissue biopsy. So they take a thin slice and they um, cut it to preserve it and then they put it on a microscope slide and add their preservative so that it's fixed on the slide and then people can view the tissue. When you take that thin slice, there's a chance that the nucleus of this cell and this cell and this cell would be left behind. So that's why you're not seeing nuclei. It's not that they don't have nuclei, it's that the when they did the biopsy, they happen to leave that cell behind, that nucleus. So where you would find this? One of the most common um, places that you think of when you think of simple squamous epithelium should be the alveoli. The alveoli of the lungs are the places where you have gas exchange. So the function would be one layer thick to allow for gas exchange. So when air comes into the respiratory system, it goes into the nose, down into past the larynx, the trachea, then it splits to the primary bronchi, which go to each one of your lungs. And then from there, it goes through this branching network of smaller and smaller tubes that eventually lead down to alveoli. And alveoli are kind of the last stop along the way. You have blood vessels that surround the outside of the alveoli, so that if there happens to be a blood vessel next to the alveolus, carbon dioxide can go out and oxygen can go into the blood. So we have gas exchange across this single layer of squamous cells. And it's thin enough that gas exchange can happen readily. So now we can get carbon dioxide, CO2, out of the body, and we can get O2 to our cells in order to make energy. This next tissue is stratified squamous epithelium. Again, the major cell type is epithelial cell. Features, multiple layers of flat or egg-shaped cells. And then here you can start to see some of the tissue differences. So here we go, if we draw a line here, this line that I've just drawn is the basement membrane. We define the basal and apical surface of a tissue. This would be the basal surface. And then this is the apical surface, or the more superficial surface of the tissue. We're not going to pay attention to this. This is a different type of tissue. It's dense, irregular connective tissue. And we'll learn about that as we go into the connective tissues. But here, we're going to focus on this top part. And what we're looking at is all of these layers of cells. Now what this circle is, is a nucleus, and then it's surrounded by a membrane. And then you have another nucleus here, and it's surrounded by a membrane. And you can see that the whole tissue is made up of solid cells. The location for this one is inside of the mouth, inside of the vagina, 
and then um, it lines other internal cavities that open up to the outside of the body like the esophagus and the function it's a barrier so it's kind of like the skin that's on the inside of your mouth or the skin that's on the inside of the vagina so it forms a barrier all of these cells up here are pretty much dead and they're continuously sloughing off and you can see these cells here that are sloughing off of the surface when the person is alive all of these cells are dividing and they are making their way up toward the surface and then eventually they're going to die so the organelles start to shrivel up and they start to get toward the end of their life cycle and then the cells die so I emphasize that the person is living while this is happening because everything on the surface of your body is dead. The living cells are at the bottom here and they are making their way up toward the surface and slowly dying. Once they're dead, then they can slough off and they'll be replaced by the cells that are coming from the bottom surface. So right here we're looking at stratified squamous epithelium and that's kind of the general life cycle of how skin regenerates itself. All of the cells are dividing down here and they're migrating toward the surface. Now this one is keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. So these cells fill with a protein called keratin. So sometimes we refer to the major cell type of this tissue as a keratinocyte. And we'll learn about keratinocytes in just a little bit when we go through the integumentary system. When we look at this tissue, you can again see different layers here. So I'm drawing the basement membrane now. This is dense irregular connective tissue. We're not talking about that one right now. What we're focusing on is the apical surface, so the top surface here. And it looks very similar to the stratified squamous epithelium that we just went through. But there's a difference. If you look at the surface here, it still looks pretty wet. Like those cells there look pretty full of um, fluid. But you look at these cells here, they're pretty dried up. So although they follow a similar path, and you're going to have multiple layers of those squamous cells, and these guys are going to be dividing and migrating toward the surface, what happens with these cells is they actually fill up with keratin and the keratin completely kills them and makes them appear really dry. So then these will slough off of the surface and be replaced by underlying cells as well. The location of keratinized stratified squamous epithelium is your skin. So this would be the epidermis layer of the skin. And then this is the dermis layer of the skin, which like I said, we'll talk about that. That's a different type of tissue. And then the function, it forms a barrier. So that's going to help protect the underlying tissues. It's going to form a barrier. So this next one, simple cuboidal epithelium. If you look at the features again, we got simple, one layer, cuboidal, cube-shaped cells. And we see this very obvious central structure here. So I'm going to draw circle around the basement membrane and then I'm going to outline the lumen and if you remember what the lumen is the lumen is just the center of a tube like structure in the body and now we can start to outline the cells those are cube shaped cells so we have one layer of cube shaped cells. This is located in the kidney tubules and in the ducts of glands. So this tissue makes up tubules or small tubes in the body and ducts of glands to help secrete things out of the glands. So the function is secretion and absorption and again that major cell type is just an epithelial cell now we move on to a simple columnar if 
So simple columnar makes up part of the digestive tract and part of the respiratory tract. I'm going to outline the lumen here. And then I'm going to outline the basal surface of the tissue. And now when we look at these cells, they are really long column shaped cells. So that's why we call them columnar. So the nuclei are here and then you can see how long each one of the cells is. The function of this tissue is secretion and absorption of nutrients. So when we bring any type of nutrient into the digestive tract, this is the lumen of the digestive tract, those nutrients are going to have to be secreted, or sorry, um, absorbed into the bloodstream. So we're going to have to go past this cell and process these nutrients in these cells in order to get into the bloodstream. So that's what we're looking at here. Secretion, absorption of nutrients, um, so secretion of like digestive components, and this is located in the digestive and respiratory tracts. Well, for this one, it's pseudostratified columnar epithelium. So for features, I want to draw out one of the cells and then I'll explain why it's called pseudostratified. So if we look at this cell here, it gets narrow at the bottom. If we look at this next cell here, there we have it. So now you can see that the nuclei are staggered. So it makes this tissue appear like it's multiple layers, but it's really just one layer. Here's the basement membrane or the basal surface. Here's the apical surface. So it's one layer but because the nuclei are staggered, it appears multiple layers. So for features, that's kind of what you're going to describe. So it appears to be multiple layers, but it's really just one layer of columnar shaped cells. Does anyone remember what these are called? So that's cilia. So cilia are going to help brush substances across the surface. This type of tissue is found in the trachea and other components of the respiratory system. And then it can be found inside the male reproductive system. And then in various other um, like glands in the body. Its function is also the um, secretion of and you primarily is going to be secretion of mucus and um, the movement of substances across its surface. Now here you can see this large white thing. This is a mucus secreting cell known as a goblet cell. So on an exam, I may point to that cell and ask you what it is. So that's a goblet cell. And in a multiple choice format, I may ask you what is the function of a goblet cell. You need to know that it secretes mucus. Then we have transitional epithelium. With transitional epithelium, what you're going to see is multiple cell shapes. So at the top, it looks more squamous. And then when you get toward the bottom, they kind of look almost columnar or cuboidal. And these varying shapes allows for this tissue to stretch. So that's the function. The function is it allows for stretching. This is going to be found in part of the urinary tract, so in the um, urinary bladder and the ureters. And then features, like I said, it's multiple shapes of, to their cells. And the major cell type is just an epithelial cell. And here's another picture of transitional epithelium. And you can see 
the main focus that we're looking at here is just this inner tissue here. We've got multiple shapes to the cells and this can stretch.